Aimlisted ScanCell is a clinical stage biopharmaceutical company leveraging its proprietary research to generate novel medicines to treat significant unmet needs in cancer. Professor Lindy Durant is the founder, the chief executive and the chief scientific officer. I'm delighted that she's joining us now. So, Lindy, what is the company's mission in a nutshell? So what we do here is really we um, use the immune system to attack cancer. So we do that in two ways. We make cancer vaccines where we stimulate your immune response to recognise and get rid of your cancer. Or if that's a little bit sluggish, we can actually make the antibodies for you, attach drugs and get those to actually target the cancer. So which type of tumours do your vaccines treat or hope to treat? So we have two vaccines in the clinic at the moment. Uh, the lead program is uh, the SCOPE study or uh, SCIP1 uh, and that's in advanced melanoma uh, and in essence that's the key to what we're doing. We try to treat cancers that have no good therapy at this point in time um, and therefore we're in metastatic or, or melanoma that's spread. The second trial is in what we call a basket trial. Um, that means it's in a range of cancers. So it's in head and neck, ovarian, triple negative breast cancer uh, and renal cancer. And the idea there is to find where we're having the most impact, you know, which of those particular diseases or indeed all of them um, does this vaccine really work. And then we can accelerate trials in that particular area. Because that's what I was going to ask you. So two cancer vaccines in the clinic. I'm just wondering, what is the data demonstrating? You know, do your vaccines work? Is it cure or control the cancer? Very good question. Yes. So um, let's take the melanoma vaccine first. So uh, what we try to do there is what both of our projects or all of our projects are what we call targeting. Um, so for the vaccines, you target these cells called dendritic cells. It's just a fancy name, but they're the cells that initiate the immune response. And if you don't target them, you don't get good immune responses. So um, unlike some of the personalised vaccines, we weren't too worried about what we targeted. We just knew we had to get it to the right place. Okay, And that's what we've done with the melanoma antigens. Um, now, what we have done is put them in combination with these drugs called checkpoints. So checkpoint inhibitors basically protect the T-cells, really, in the tumour environment. The tumours evolve all sorts of mechanisms to fight off the immune system. Uh, And the checkpoints are pretty good at uh, sort of combating that battle on your behalf. What the vaccine does is generate really nice, super good T-cells that go in there and, and fight with the army. So at the moment, the checkpoints will give you probably a 50% chance of having disease control. Okay, so I, if some of your tumour regressing, probably about 20% of long-term survival, i.e. beyond five years. We always hesitate with cure in this game. Basically, you're only cured if you never get cancer again, basically. Um, what's happened with the vaccine is we've taken that number from 50% to 85%. So uh, a really significant increase, basically, which is really, really exciting. And that's in terms of Um, certainly the disease is regressing, which is great. And we have got some patients with complete responses. Again, I hesitate cure because we're talking at six months. So if in five years they still have no disease, then it's looking really hopeful for those guys. But definitely strong, durable, predictable responses, which is really exciting. So the second child is body. Yeah, so body works in a slightly different way. So when cells get stressed, um, they basically modify their proteins, okay? If nothing else happens, those cells would just die, get replaced, everything's fine. If there's also what we call inflammation, which is normally infection for the immune system, then those abnormal proteins get presented on the surface of the cell and alert the immune system, okay? And then the immune system will help in removing them as fast as possible. As I say, normally a virally infected or a bacterially infected cell. Now, cancer cells are very stressed, okay? Despite what everybody says. Um, They never have enough food. They grow where they shouldn't. They're stressed, basically. But they do everything in their power to stop inflammation. Um, So that's what our vaccine does. It stimulates uh, inflammation um, and then 
that basically those abnormal proteins get presented on the cell surface and our T cells attack them. Um, so it's just a way of sort of overcoming one of the tumor's mechanisms of avoiding it, and we focus that immune response. Now, again, we're just about to start a trial, again, with the double checkpoints, because even though we get great T cells, they still need protecting. We still need as many soldiers in that fight against the cancer as, as we can um, muster. Um, so it'll be really exciting to see if we see the same sort of response rate in it. This one will be in renal, but then we see it in, in melanoma. If that's true, then not only do we have great vaccines, we have a good way forward. Which is wonderful. Wonderful news indeed, because one of your most recent investor updates were about um, regulatory approval, expanding Modify, um, who will receive Modi1 in combination with double checkpoint inhibitors. Um, obviously, um, I don't quite understand that. You can tell by the way I read that announcement out, but I understand it is a milestone for the company. Um, very much so, yes, exactly. So we had to be fairly cautious with Modi because it's completely new. It's, it's a very different uh, approach. Nobody's tried before that it wasn't toxic, that it wasn't going to cause patients any harm. Um, and we had to find the right dose and the right regime. All of that's been done now. So tick, 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 no tox. It doesn't, doesn't do anybody any harm. Um, we are seeing some nice stable disease uh, on its own, again, indicating some activity. Now with the double checkpoints, hopefully we're going to push those patients into tumour regression, hopefully some complete. So talk to me how recruitment is going for the next cohort for the vaccine platform one which is the skip one from immunobody yeah so skip one um we sort of we designed basically to be what we call hlaa2 restricted it's a very fancy term for meaning just about 40 percent of the patients are eligible okay and that's because we knew we had some really good epitopes and they had we we knew them from patients who'd spontaneously sometimes melanoma goes away on its own and that's because the immune system can break through and actually cure the cancer itself. It's very rare. Um, but clearly scientists hone on that and work out how that happened. And that's what we've been using. So we thought, well, right, let's do it in our targeted vaccine and see if it works, which is what we've seen now. Um, but in the meanwhile, we've done this second generation vaccine, which adds lots more epitopes. And we found lots more uh, ways of attacking the cancer, I guess is the best way of saying it. So now potentially 100% of melanoma patients would be eligible, okay? Uh, so we got MRHA approval. Um, we started those patients. I think we now have 10 on study because you can imagine the 60% that were getting skip one are now super excited because they can get iSkip1+. Um, now, ultimately, if that works better, then it's a better market for us, but equally it's a better deal for cancer patients. So uh, it's going well. Recruitment's going well. Uh, we had a bit of a slowdown with the Skip one because iSkip1 Plus was pending. And so people wanted to sort of, you know, they always want to go into the new vaccine and all the rest of it. Um, but um, recruitment's doing really well. So hopefully we'll catch up very quickly then. So what's the overall plan for the vaccines to be bought by Big Pharma? And what processes need to be ticked off before you reach that stage, if that's what you want to happen? Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's it's never a good plan to plan to to sell as such, if you see what I mean. So the the plan is to do the phase two, phase three. Uh, it's a randomised regulation trial, um, and we will take it all the way through to uh, approval. Now, if somebody at any point comes in and makes an offer that's extremely good, and we think that would fast track things, we're not going to say no. Clearly, um, but you know, at this point, we have to plan to take it all the way. Um, and then see what opportunities are available along the way. And at each stage, you'll be protecting your IP. So I'm just wondering how well patented your initiatives are. Yeah, so that's always been very strong. I mean, I guess that's the advantage of, of having a CEO who was uh, the scientist and we protect our patents. We have about 19 patent families and indeed, iSkip1 Plus comes with a brand new patent um, that extends that life for another, you know, uh, probably it was 20 years, probably 18 years now. 
So again, it's something we pay very close attention to because that's how we make sure nobody sort of takes your idea and runs with it and doesn't give us the credit. There have been deals, though. I'm particularly interested in the Tasty Antibody Licence Agreement signed with GenLab, GenMab in October 2022. This could be worth as much as 624 million US dollars if fully developed. Is that number still relevant? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what we do with the antibodies is, again, we make antibodies to um, sugars. Now, they're things that um, sort of decorate proteins, I guess is the best way of saying it. Um, and they're really hard to make antibodies to. OK, but that's a technology we've developed. Um, and um, Genmab love those antibodies because they're very specific so they bind super well to cancer and have very little normal expression. Okay, But we provide the antibodies. What they do is then put on the missile, so to speak, the toxic drug. So that makes it into an ADC. Um, so in essence, they do all that work for us. They take it through all the preclinical and everything else, and they take it forward into the clinic. So I guess it's a fast way of getting a product rather than just an antibody. Um, but downstream... You're absolutely right. If they work, we get a really nice reward for that. We do get milestones along the way, but it's mainly, you know, if it goes all the way and it looks good. They know you very well. Uh, GenMab has been a partner of ScanCells for decades, first mentioned in dispatches in an investor update in 2001. They're very keen to keep you close, Lindy. Yes, no. So they've always liked this approach of the anti glycan antibodies if you, um, and, you know, at various points um, they've either wanted to do a deal or we've done a deal with another company or whatever else, basically. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good relationship, as I say, because they, they have this um, ADC technology, this missile technology, which we do not have. Um, and we have antibodies they can't make. So um, it's a really nice collaboration. It's just that there appears to be much consistency and stickability in the Scanstell story in terms of partnerships and cornerstone investors. What do you put that down to? I think it's really down to very innovative and clever science that has translated nicely into preclinical and clinical data. So um, the whole story, it takes a long time, unfortunately, to go from concept right through to the clinic and proving in the clinic. So I'm very grateful that people have, have stayed through and, and stuck with us with this story. But hopefully with this new stunning clinical data, we're beginning to show them you were right. It, it really does work. Um, and now there could be good, strong commercial potential for my investors. I'm just thinking about other interested parties just how exclusive is that gen map deal or are there other deals like this on the horizon i mean again clearly i can't talk specifics at this point but yes one of the main aims of, of scansell is to continue to talk to people about similar or better or different licensing deals other people have other ways of arming antibodies and, and that could be another approach and various other things um, what we'd ultimately love to do is take some of the antibodies into the clinic ourselves because clearly that adds zeros to the, the upfront so you get more upfront in it possibly and the same downstream. So that would be fantastic too. But at the moment we have to focus on that stunning melanoma data, getting Modi through. We can't do everything. We're a relatively small company and I think focusing and delivering is, is our aim at this point. Okay, so you're... You're small, you're successful to date. So four platforms as of June 2024. Is the plan to create another or is four enough? <laughs> I'd never ask a scientist what's enough, basically. But yes, at the moment, we we have a very strong pipeline. We have a number of really good products. So the focus is more getting those into the clinic or validating them as deals. So of course, deals are a way of getting other stuff in the clinic. Um, so that's always been my passion to take the science from the lab and into patients and hopefully uh, help them. But by so doing, also increase shareholder value. So in many ways, it, it works well. And also, it's very rare for a company involved in, in so much research to have 
any money, but you have had milestone payments. So I'm wondering what the current cash balance is as of June 2024 and what does the cash runway look like? Yeah, so um, um, basically we had um, about 25 million at the last sort of uh, account, basically. Um, That was back in January, so that's the sort of money we have. So we're not going to run out any time soon, but that said, we don't have the money at this point for the phase two, phase three. (laughs) So that's potentially more deals. We need to raise that sort of money in that concept and that's what we're working hard to do or indeed other fundraising options. We're keeping all options open at this point, basically. Because what I was going to ask you was, you know, was it fair to say that revenues from the preclinical antibody platform partially de-risks the business model by providing non-dilutive cash? Absolutely. Um, and that, that was always the plan. Well, the plan was twofold with the deals, as I said. One was to get stuff into the clinic. And of course, um, you know, by them taking them on board and taking the, the lion's share of the costing, that saves us money in that regard as well. But equally, the revenue you're right helps us then invest in other clinical stuff that we can take forward. To be fair, when we were running phase one, sort of two trials, that worked pretty well. Um, but the quantum to do a phase two, phase three is slightly bigger. So there we need to seriously think about our options. The company was founded in 1997 based on the research led by you. Investors are comforted with you, the founder, at the helm. So is the plan for you to stay on for the foreseeable in perpetuity? <laughs> I don't know about in perpetuity, but certainly for the foreseeable future, yes. Very good. Now, in summary, what is it about ScanCell and its offering that differentiates it against others in the biotech ecosystem ecosystem, and those working on a cancer treatment? That's a really good question. Um, I mean, the simple answer is sort of innovative science. Um, and you know that that's where we get our unique position. Um, I was told when I started out not to go for mainstream and try and compete with big American labs because you know they have more money and more resource. So it, it had to be something a little bit smarter, um, a little bit cleverer. Um, sometimes being too novel is not always a good thing because people sort of don't aren't always convinced. I think that's why it's so important to get good clinical data. Um, if we can translate things from the lab and show patient benefit, um, that's the most convincing we can do, that we have got some clever ideas. Um, Yeah, I think it's good science translated into the clinic. So this is a similar question. It's a final question, though. So why should investors have ScanCell on their watch list? I think because, um, as I say, that clinical data at the moment is looking really, really strong. Um, If we get the similar sort of response rate in melanoma in a randomized phase two, phase three, it will be one of very few vaccines approved and taking forward. And it proves the concept. I've always said checkpoints work on the principle that T cells can kill cancer. Okay, vaccines generate T cells, so they should work. Um, somebody someday will make it work. I think I'm there. Um, if people want to back me, then I think we're nearly there. Uh, clearly, everybody has to make their own decision on that. But vaccines will work one day, and when they do, they're going to be pretty huge. So that's the excitement. Thank you very much. You could tell that I was a little bit um, out of my depth with some of the questions. You were very gentle with me, and thank you very much for the education, Professor Lindy Durrant. Chief Executive, Chief Scientific Officer and Founder of ScanCell. Thank you very much indeed.